Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Good morning to all of you out there today. This is the Hello Self podcast, and I am your host, Patricia Leonard. You know, this podcast was created for everybody, actually, but those of you who may be saying that you can't do something, this is about yes, you can if you desire. So the podcast is about turning your cans into cans. And how do we do that? We invite guests like my special guest today, Edie Hand. Say hello, everybody, Edie. Hey, I'm so glad to be here with you, Patricia. Thank you. And hi, everybody. (laughs) I can tell you're going to learn a lot from Edie. She's one of these women that never cry victim. She has gotten out there in every Hello Self moment that she had. I think she's made something out of it. That offers strategies and tips for you on how you can turn your dreams into reality. So the way we're going to do this, Edie, if that's okay with you, is I'm going to give a little overview of you, but you know the details and you know the real story about Edie hand and everything that you've accomplished. She has done so many things. So it's just proof to you, audience, that there is nothing you can't do if you set your mind to it. We were just talking before we got started about finding a tribe that supports what we want to do or a group of people that supports what we want to do. So don't sit alone and wish and dream Get out there and find your tribe. That's one of the very first things we're going to talk to you about is nobody knows how to start everything. As a matter of fact, we just learn. And the way we learn is to jump in. So I'm going to give you this overview. Edie sent me her bio, and I'm just going to pick some things out of it that gives you a flavor of who she is, and then she'll tell you her story. She has done so many things, and I am so excited to share with you. So here we go, and I've just highlighted some things on here. Edie Hand has created a movement, a real movement with women specifically from her book, True Grit, Women of True Grit. Now, Edie, hold up your book and let them see that. All right, here we go. Women of True Grit. And that's the book you want to get. And that's the one we're talking about today. But that was one thought she had, and she wrote a book about it. She is also the producer of a film, in a theatrical film based on the Sharon Davies book, Rising Road. So a producer of a film, besides an author. Then she speaks on topics specifically important to women, and she calls her speaking topics pearls of hope. And the string of pearls represents your life, and the beads, the pearls on there, are the create the necklace of the events in your life. She's also got a television show in Alabama, and she is, it lives in Birmingham, Alabama. And she has taken that city by storm. She's got everything (laughs) going there. It originally aired in 2021. Edie is a creative producer of this True Grit series. And she's got so many things I could just go on. But her whole goal in the speaking and everything she does is about empowering women to go after what they want to do. And she will show you some examples from her own life. Just a couple of more points. Edie Hand Foundation started over 15 years ago in honor of her three brothers. And if she wants to share that, she'll tell you more about that. GRIT stands for 
great resilience in transformative times, transformative events in your life. Having the grit to do it not just wish or not become a victim, but get out there and do it. So I, I'm just going to get out of here now. I may butt in and ask some questions every now and then. Well, here. I hope you will. <laughs> okay, good. We will, because it's just a conversation. So Edie, I'm going to let turn it over to you, and you can tell them about your book, how you got started, what drove you, your Hello Self moments that actually inspired you because we want to inspire others to pay attention to those moments in their lives that can cause them to, hey, I can do this. Okay, Edie, here we go. Thank you so much. Hello, self, I thought about this. First of all, I began in a little place nestled in Northwest Alabama called Burnout. And I, my brothers and I used to ride our horses to the little Schubert's Corner and tie them up and write plum on the sign. Burnt oh. plum. Nothing was happening in yes. our little town of Burnham. That was a hello moment for me that I was in a place that there isn't a lot happening, but buying an ROC cola and a moon pie. It's a little <laughs> so for me, that was humbling but special because I realized that with these three boys, I was the oldest of five, but my sister didn't come along till later in life. So I grew up with these three boys riding horses. I think the beautiful thing about it was that we always were intrigued with television. My brother David named his horse Spotted Cloud because he was in, he loved the Lone Ranger way back then, oh, the Lone yeah. Ranger Tonto. And I named my horse Trigger because I was in love with Roy Rogers and Dale Evans. <laughs> and this was again the television. And my brother Terry named his horse Polly because he was in love with our Avon lady. <laughs> and we all had different reasons. And I'm thinking that was a hello moment to myself that how different we all were, but yes. some of the similar things we like to do. And talking about what I wanted to be, we would ride to the Indian Mounds. We had 40 acres on our property. And I said, oh, I'm going to be a movie star one day. I'm going to grow up. I'm going to write stories. And they went, oh, yeah, sure. When you get your mansion, call us. <laughs> and they would just lay there and laugh until. And then, of course, Davey was going to be a race car driver. And he'd pick up a pine cone and start racing, telling a race. Oh, here comes so and so. And then my brother, Terry, he was a little more stern. He was going to grow up and be an architect. Like our grandfather built houses. But he said, I'm going to build buildings and dams. And then my brother, Philip, was, he didn't always fit in and he was shy, but he said, I think I'm going to be a songwriter and a singer like our cousins and our uncles. Cause we were related to the, to Elvis Presley. Our famous cousin was Elvis Presley and our uncles, my mom's brothers were all incredible musicians, singers. Song. So they would make music on the front porch. And he said, Hey, I'm going to go with them because they don't talk much, but they sure do get all the girls. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So from that, I thought, wow, who knows what we're going to be? But when I began college and left them behind, and David was not far behind me. He was killed in my automobile accident at the age of 19. Then 10 years later, my other, my baby brother, Philip, was killed in an automobile accident. Then another 10 years, my brother, Terry was stricken with an aneurysm in the middle of the brain. And my mother, my sister and I, they'd come along. She was older by then, helped a care gift for him for seven years. That's a long time. Mm -hmm. Until before he lost his voice, he said, Edith, would you tell our story one day? Oh. And I said, why would you want me to tell our story? And he said, because you have taught us about the gift in Psalms 37, 10, I believe it is. I'd have to look it up, but it was about renewing one's spirit and being able to have a pure heart and do good things. And he felt I had a pure heart that I had given so much that I would drive from Birmingham to North Alabama every other night and care give. We didn't have caregivers like we have today. No. And he had 10 horses, different horses doing different things. And Maybe there was three in that barn. I, it's been a long time ago, but I know that we would ride those horses just to keep them active. And 
he'd like to just lay there and hear them rattle yeah. around. I say all that to say I learned from him about courage. I thought to myself, I, I hope that I can have this courage to face the, something this traumatic. Little did I know that I would. And my, I learned about laughter from my brother David that had passed on. He loved to tell jokes too. And I loved about seizing moments from my brother Philip. So to myself, when I would look in the mirror, I would think about all the qualities I had learned from these black boys that would prepare me for my adult life because I was devastated. Oh. I spent my young adult years giving up my family. And then my mother just died of a broken heart. And then my father died. And when I go to that same little burnout, Schubert's Corner, which I actually went this past weekend to visit my sister in the country on this sprawling 75 acres she's got. I went and sat at the bench that I'd put at the foot of their graves. And I thought, here you all are under this big oak tree. And I'm still telling your stories. Yeah. And, and so for me, they served me well in teaching yes. me about what I said of those qualities. And it is needed in life when you go through, and I began using the metaphor of a pearl, that it takes a speck of grit uh, through, and through irritations inside of an oyster shell, a beautiful pearl is born. And we go through irritations in life. And so for us to become who we need to be at different seasons of life, this is what God gave me to build on. And I also learned that I came up with the different colors of pearls, oh. the different things of myself. The white pearls were for starting over. The yellow pearls were for stains. The pink pearls were for fun. And the black pearls were for the dark times. And the silver pearls were for wisdom. And the gold pearls were for endurance. The purple pearl that I added later was about passions that we have so what I've done is taken these different pearls and to form them on this unique strand of life that I call that holds the unique colors of pearls to be who we need to be yes so that's how I utilize all of the hard things to turn them into those silver linings for me to find beautiful situations the people I met I can tell everyone that's listening that the most beautiful thing is my relationships. And some people come in and out of my life for a season. Some stay a lot longer. My first college roommate that I did her story in this book, the 63 women's stories I've done in this were for different reasons. But I think about for 50 year friendship, that's a long time. We were 18 years old in college past that. And at this season time of life, I value and reflect back of what my grandmother taught me the most beautiful of the silver pearls of wisdom. She gave me my first book that fascinated me of the Velveteen Rabbit. Oh, and, yes. And the importance of being genuine. Yes. And, being, and she said, it's like that little rocking horse with the stick out handles and you can ride on it. You can hold that little rabbit for a long time and when a child does it becomes real to it that is real to them in their heart and I have learned that many things have become very real to me like believing and sensing the spirits of those that have gone on from me and that they have given me strength to find through those irritations of mine in life the grit to do what I need to do little did I know that the passions I'd had with that purple pearl that I would end up writing about what my grandmother gave me the wisdom of the white pearls that she would drape across her bible and she said this is the purity of the word and that Edie just remember that when you go through life you're going to fall in some old mud holes sometimes but you got to get up and wash it off <laughs> and she said and then, it. yeah and you hear a good old country lady saying that and then she'd say and there's going to be some curves oh my god yeah <laughs> But and some detours and all <laughs> that. That's right. But you can do it. And then when you think you're at the end and you can't do anymore, you can dig down deep and you can do it. 
you can do it one more time until it is your time to transition. She was a woman of true grit, wasn't she? She was. And the wisdom that she gave me, I took it to heart. Being a, Words were powerful to me and I would write them down. And I wrote about the old home place. And I thought, and I, they gave me music, which is good for the soul. Mm. My grandfather played a banjo and they played, my grandmother played the spoons and we made music on the front porch. Elvis came and our grandmothers, Elvis's grandmother, my grandmother were sisters. So they wore these little aprons Elvis would buy them and they'd have snuff in their pocket. <laughs> yeah. Black toothbrushes and clean their teeth with it. it was I said, oh my God, the <laughs> Southern Sorbet. Anyway, <laughs> these ladies have given me such wisdom to pass on. And I think what I learned that helped me the most was learning the importance of paying life forward and understanding the strength of going on in my gold pearls. Little did I know I'd go through cancer numerous times myself, losing a kidney, on and on. I never thought that I would still be standing, but I knew then that when I revised from over 20 years ago, the women of true grit was my legacy. It was to be taught that it's voices of other women to say, you're not alone. Yes, yes exactly. And we're stronger as a sisterhood and our pearls of hope are what I've created with people far more intelligent than I am in the technical world is that we have to have the science of life and understand it. We have to understand that science of life, uh, math and science that yes. stars and technology is that allows us to reach people all over the world. And so that's why we formed the Grit Hub and my friends, Carolyn Hart, Lauren Bodie, that they have put together something that we're going to be able to offer for free to people. There'll be classes sometimes that certainly are fees to do different workshops. I say this to people all the time, value another person's work because they have light bills too. Everybody, we all need to help each other. If right. It's, it's buy a book from each other. If it's share your circle of influence, what are you going to do with it? If you can't help somebody, what's the point? And so I've learned to apply that and my relationships are everything. I say, you never know who's sitting next to you that can make a difference in your life. So true. And to change it. To me, I think that one of the strongest things is too is the sense of health, understanding that mental health is real, that there's not any of us that hadn't gone through life to have that dark pearl or to get down or depressed or think, yes. what am I going to do with the rest of my life? At this season time of my life, I feel like I have been refreshed, that my faith has been renewed and I am forming a different kind of sisterhood with this movement. It may be similar to yours or somebody else's out there, but it is uniquely mine through what I do with the pearls. But through these voices I give of other women, you may find something that helps you to know you can do anything you want to be. You can come from a place like I did in burnout where there was nothing happening. Yes. And go to, I tell them I still live in a place that nothing is much happening, but I'm always going somewhere. If You've you, got a you know, great foundation from your family that you shared, already shared. It's interesting, as I listen to you, you have taken that learning to create this life that you now have. What do you think, many people have family foundations and all that. What do you think was the hello self moment that caused you to begin to understand, to write your book in this manner, to create your grid hub? What was the hello self moment that just, let's just focus on the book right now, that took you from that great foundation to write this book? What do you think really triggered that? Because I think that's what people, they talk about things, but they don't be, they're not able to get that feeling. Okay, today's the day to start. What was that catalyst? That one thing? Yeah, that yeah, catalyst. All that it, I can tell you, 
I thought I was done. I had been betrayed for a lot of money. Yes. The season time of my life, I thought, what am I going to do? I've had a good life. I think I'm just going to be like in the notebook. I'm going to lay down tonight and I'm not going to wake up tomorrow. I'm going to transition. And I really did. I went to bed with that in my mind. And I had been looking around, cleaning things up that day because I was getting things in order to leave. And I had found a sword in a closet. It was a war warrior sword. And I'd put it in the corner that night. And I had everything in order. And I normally cut my phone off by my bed. But this particular night, I did not. I rarely leave it on. And at 4.07, it buzzed. I'm thinking, I'm awake. I haven't left here. I'm, what is this? So I looked and I thought, why would that person be texting me at this? So I thought, I'm going to see what it is. And it was a young attorney. I'd had lunch there before and she said, I listened to it. And she said, I don't know what's going on with you, but God didn't let me sleep tonight because he wanted you to listen to girls with swords. Interesting. And so I looked in the corner. I thought, I found that sword today. And so I I can tell you, I've got it laying right over here, mm-hmm. is that I it is a pearl handle. And she said, I want you to listen to Lisa Bevere, who wrote the book, Girls with Swords. I thought, okay. And I listened. I got up out of my bed and I got that sword. And she said, if you're having a day where you don't think you matter, you get the sword and you slay that demon because you matter. And I want you to dig down deep inside of you and find the lion and the lioness will roar. And if you listen, you will know your purpose. That was for me at that moment. Guess what was on that sword? I got to show it to you. This sword is, let me just step over here and get it. Look at this sword. It has a lion head. And so I said, I'm going to slay my demons. And it was Easter going to be Easter weekend and I thought if Jesus could have a Friday when all hope was lost and Sunday all hope was restored and I said my Sunday's coming I'm going to I'm going to somehow get beyond this I don't know how but I'm going to use my faith I've never looked back. That was 10 years ago. And God restored this work for me to do of women of true grit. That was changing for me. (laughs) That was major. Edie just gave, to to you listening today, Edie just gave you some very important things to pay attention to. She didn't know what she was going to do next. That's where many of us are. Or maybe many of you, but you've got a dream and hope. But isn't that interesting that in the middle of the night, something happened and she had seen the sword earlier. She started to make these connections. And that's what this is all about. Women of True Grit, Hello Self is starting to make these connections. If you get a feeling and something confirms that, I'll tell you a, a, a confirmation that I use, and I, too, get my feedback. I don't know. It's a male voice, and but I get my feedback at 4 o'clock in the morning. I don't know what it is. But let me tell you something that I did. I do this just to satisfy myself. My own heart doesn't say that it's for anybody else. But I remember one time finding a penny. 
and I some somebody that was with me said, "Why are you picking that up? I don't. That, that's not worth anything. Oh, is it on the reverse side? Oh, that's bad luck." And I said, "No, this is a message from God," and that's what I said to myself and to the person with me. So when I got home. I said, God, you know what? I want to have a pact with you because I don't know where I'm going next. But I know because you had it all planned out before I got here. And I said, so can we have a pact? Now, this is a pact that I created many years ago with God. I got two big jars of coins. So I said, God, let's have it this. Whenever I have a big question or if I feel like I'm not connected to you anymore. So I feel distant. I say, God, give me a coin. I just need to know you're around. And I have two big jars of coins that I pick up. And all I do is, some of you may say, oh, that's a crazy thing. But all I do, it's like the sword that mm -hmm. Edie just told you about. It's whatever you and God have as your pact. And he will tell, I found this at the gym, show me the desires of your heart and I will show you the way. So you don't have to know everything. And that's what Edie is telling you. She's giving you some fabulous tips, but make the connections, make the connections. It doesn't have to be a coin like I got, doesn't have to be a sword like Edie's got. Get her book and read it. You may pick up things in there that, but connect but don't give up no victimhood in our lives here so just look no. at the connections and they seem so unreal what's that got to do with it what's that got to do with it but it's the connection that we have with our higher self and i really believe that you oh, said I do so too, much Edie. and to me if someone uh -huh. out there is listening and they need to know that is that look here i am in my 70s at this time, and I'm proud of it because with this has come wisdom. And I'm yes. working 20 year olds that are saying, Oh, I love to sit and learn from you. And then I go, Oh, I love to sit and learn from you. Yes, that's <laughs> me. Oh my God. Because in feeling that is that we all have something. All of these women in my book, my stories are not heartwarming. They are heart moving. And I'm listening, gaining from Edie right now. And we're the same age. So I'm gaining from what she's telling us because we can learn from everything, can't we, Edie? Absolutely. Because I learn from you all the time. And I know this is that if you listen, just remember to listen because great listeners become incredible, extraordinary doers. Oh, yes. Amen. And I do say this, that none of us has control of life's events, but we do have control of how we respond to them. Yes. And if we, we should not, we can't change the past. We can only ask forgiveness. Forgiveness is such a, such an important word and words are powerful, but all we can do is ask forgiveness. And if you have faith, you know that you can be forgiven. I haven't always made all the right choices, but I can tell you at this season of my life, I have, I'm making better choices because I listen better. And I also don't need as many people around me. And, and don't I, and let the past, Edie's saying, don't let the past dictate your future. No, yes. absolutely. Learn from it. Yes. In the documentary yeah. I did about them, is about lessons from love. There is nothing any greater than to be loved. I am a mother. I have a son that is an actor and lives in Burbank, California. We lost his dad over 10 years ago to cancer. We have, we understand great loss, but every day he calls me at least twice, maybe three times. And Link's a very talented guy and he's certainly not a mama's boy. He, but he, I listen to him. He calls me because I listen and I understand the entertainment world. If you want to relate to your children out there today or your grandchildren or your great grandchildren, I don't have any grandchildren, but I can tell you 
that I see that they want to be with people that mm. want to listen and they are willing to hear if they know you truly listen. Mm. I have two great nieces and a great nephew and they sit and chat with me and my sister was at they don't, they adore her, but they don't talk to her like they talk to me. When they come to see, they call me Edel. It's just their pet name. They said, we have a grandmother, a Mimi, and an Edel. So yes. I, I'm in the group. And it's because they say, we love to come to hear you laugh, Edel. And we love because we can tell you about whatever. Yes. And I love that. So remember, they can tell their story, Edie. They can, yeah, they you tell, tell your story and they love it. They tell you their story. When they came to get a book from me, my sweet niece bought each one of them their own book and they came up to shake my hand. They said, we'd like to meet the author. I said, now, you know, they asked me about it. I said, 90% of them I wrote, but 10% people submitted some stories and yeah. I, edited them and I have an editing team that does more I said it takes a village to do whatever you do and I said but this whole vein is from that grit and I asked these little children even what does true grit mean to you and then their answers just absolutely blew my mind of how that's they, another book Edie <laughs> that, that little kid oh I'm done but I would say this is that if I did anything I, I would do a children's book with those children because understanding no matter who you are what nationality you are where you're from you matter and that's what I project to children is they matter and what they've I, got a story just like and they, adults. And they, yes. like adults and then this women of true grit just like with you that I have learned to respect certain women that I choose to spend time with within this organization that we share, but there are other organizations, my Bible study group. There's five women in my class that I've known for 35 years. <laughs> and I'm going, you know, how many people have been to Bible study for 35 years? <laughs> I, not many, but I say this to say it matters. We all, if you'll just listen, as I use mine is pearls of hope. Yes. And I use this unique strand of pearls that I hope that when I leave here, I know that they'll know I walked. They'll know that I mattered. And that is important to me because I want someone to pass it on and pay it forward. If you want to make a difference and matter, you stop and listen. You apply your tools, if it's tools of life. Look, how I dealt with so much loss, I learned to detach. There's no way I could have run an advertising agency I owned for over 30 years in Central Alabama and South Alabama and traveled literally the world doing works with FedEx to hospitals, many organizations. It allowed me to see and do things because I never limited myself. Right. And today... It takes this way. If you can detach from some things that are very painful, you can keep projecting that positive projection, but you have to apply your passion, your perseverance, and find what allows you to keep your head down and to stay resilient. What would That's you right. say are three tips that you would, because I love what you said, keep your head down and keep going after what you want what are three strategies or three tips that people could apply those listening could apply to work toward that to actually find that within themselves because a lot of people say I procrastinate I say I'm going to do that but I don't do it I've been dreaming about writing sometimes you'll walk I'll talk to somebody and I say have you ever thought about writing a book that would be oh yeah I've thought about that a lot of times and but what would I write about? Oh, let, me, oh, let me tell you, it's like I told my son about creating a film. Uh -huh. And he said, Mother, you're the writer. I know how to tell the story. And I said, here's what I'm going to suggest to you. And I'll suggest to your audience. Yes. Great. Is that I said, record your thoughts. 
I first start with, I record my thoughts. And I'm old school, but it's sometimes it's new school, is that I found that just because it was the way it used to be doesn't mean it's not okay today, is I take a legal pad and then I write it down and then I'll type it up in my computer. Mm -hmm. But it's just the way I do it. Find your style. One of the ways, if you're unsure of all of it, you can always listen to it back because your tone will help you then to write down what you want to edit out and then you can type it up. And I do that. That's, but the discipline I have found because my son is the most disciplined person I know health wise. I'm learning that what I put into my body and how I'm exercising is what gives me brain power. And so I'm saying I'm having to, I'm, I have good habits, but I have to get excellent habits. Now, I, what I'm learning now is when, where I've been doing 15, 20 minutes of something to stretch it, now I've got to do 30. Just because, but if I said, but if I don't have a 15 or 20, I need to do it every day instead of three times a day. All I'm saying to people is if you want to become extraordinary, you want to look extra great, you have got to progress with it. It doesn't happen all at once. It's like the Velveteen Rabbit. You got it. You love it for a long time. You got to work at it to get to where it's just like getting up to eat your oatmeal in the morning, to eat healthier, eat the right fruit. What you put into that body, it goes into that brain. And what these kids that are homeless or people that are homeless, I talk about it. We were at a school at Historical Black College that some of these kids were homeless. When they get out of summer school, they don't have anywhere to go. So that they were finding tents or finding coupons to go get food. You don't know what another person is going through. But if you can somehow, through your own, think about it. And if you can keep coupons, I've told people, you want to feel like you bless somebody, keep a coupon to a McDonald's or a Hardee's or someplace. Oh my God, I do that all the time. I love it. And just (laughs) give it away. Give it away. Get them and keep it in your car, in your purse. You don't have to stop and chat. We don't know what the deal is. But I said, those are things I do that enrich my mind and yes. my body. Then another thing I do in leadership is I look for greatness in a person. And it's the way they speak to me. I know if they respect me by what they mm-hmm. say and I how they say it. And so I have learned this in my senior years. I didn't know this in my younger years, but I have weeded out more people that I don't need to be around. And I have found new people that I wanted to be around. Oh my God. I cannot believe what you're saying there. I have to tell you, I am, this is old school, I know, but I like thank you letters, a little thank you note. And I know texting is the way, but I helped my little niece. I donated some money to her school for a fundraiser. They happened to come in really good. But you know what? Stella is only 12 years old. She wrote a note, a thank you note to me and put it in the mail herself. And I asked her mother, did you tell Stella to do that? And she said, no. Those are the things that make you stand out as a human being. And yes, texting is nice, but it doesn't have that commitment level that Edie is talking about. To you, she says she looks at leadership that way. And I told Stella, you got a bright future, honey. Keep doing what you're doing innately. That's leadership. Yes. Yes. And I see my son when I go to LA and He's also, everyone's got a gig they make extra money at or doing things. His oh, is, yes. 20 years, he's the night opening act for Jimmy Kimmel Live. So I see him opening the door for the girls, walking when he was younger. There you go. To the car and they went, Link was raised by a Southern mama. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly <laughs> and, right. <laughs> and so, you don't have to be from the South to have good manners. Manners never go out of style. If I can leave anything with this, when I look into the mirror, 
and I say hello self. Today's going to be a good day. I start out with a good day and I start out with yes. I may end up with no, but I learned from the late great Buddy Killen. Edie May, he'd say. Now we might not go all the way to yes today, but we're going to start with it. And understand too that no doesn't always mean no. It is how we project what we have that you can turn around and it is your style and it is your patience your perseverance and that keeping your head down and saying grit great resilience is transformative and i'll leave you with that that's grit is it oh edie these are great strategies and tips and the storytelling if you want Edie to do a speaking engagement I'm just marketing you I don't know if you want that or not <laughs> no thank you if they how could they reach you where could they reach you and we'll put it on when we post it we'll put it out there too but if you could just tell them do this and I'll okay I'll, there, right. there is a form on my site of ediehand.com they can go there they can look under speaking they can look under books there are the bar will tell them where to go and they can reach me there's emails there's phone numbers the same way on the grit hub it's grit i hub app i h u b hub app a p p dot org on that grit yeah for, tell me what you'd be interested. looking for if, there yeah if you went to there there is a bar that has just easy hand we have we are putting with our pearl coaches to have different channels if it's on grief if it's on leadership if it's on abuse whatever the cat we have six or seven cat and by the end of june we will have you know we're going to have six to seven pearl coaches and it's free but if you want the pearl coaches to do events for you or to share their books we're going to have it linked to their sites and to honor them because our coaches if they're giving you their time we need to remember to book people for events or to buy their books at least so we feel like this is a way to teach not just younger people but seasoned people in the community everybody's time is of value and if we're not giving money we should purchase something from them or book them for an event and that's what good manners is and we're teaching good Absolutely. business policies and strategies. So that's what the grid hub is about and but I am set up so that I have one guy that does my individual stuff through my edhand.com that like I said has the books, has the speaking events and I do customize them. And when I go to churches, I have scriptures that go with the different colors of pearl. Mm. And we get into the Bible. I bring my Bible and we talk about these verses that I have been given in my spirit that I feel I can relate the stories. And I tell some are funny, some are heart moving and some are tough, but that's life. That's life. And that is, and so I am about sharing through the pearls of hope, the irritations of life and how to turn those hard things into beautiful situations. Now that's true grit, isn't it? That is true grit is when we can take those moments or those events in our life that think this is the end of the world, but just to see it, it's only a moment, it's only a pause in our, in today. Yes. I'm telling you, and I love the fact that you're reaching out to help others. If you don't know what to do, go on and sign up for the Hub Grit. And you can hear people, you can get books that are referred there. Yes. To help you move forward on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. That's what mm -hmm. True Grit. And if you notice that everything Edie has talked about is giving back. Give back. If you give to others, I'll tell you, you feel better about yourself and it'll bring you out of a funk that you might be in just she mentioned a coupon just take a coupon i go to the grocery store a woman was at the counter i had two coupons for a dozen eggs 
And I said, are you going to buy eggs today? And you know how eggs are expensive now. Yeah. And she said, yes, I am. And I said, do you want this coupon? I don't know if it's the brand you buy. She hugged me. Oh, she hugged yeah. me. These are the little thing. And I felt like a million dollars. It wasn't even my coupon. It was Kroger's. <laughs> really? But it is that part of, again, you listen. And I tell you another thing is look at people's body language. Ah. And sometimes people say, oh, no, that's okay. I don't need that. And then I have just said, just pass it on for me, would you? Then oh, they can great. either you then they can either use it or not. Yes, great. I'll tell you, I use coupons. I'll take any. Dollar. <laughs> <laughs> and think about it. Think about the people that are on the side of the road. Most of them are near, unless they're out in the middle of nowhere. And I started too taking like chips and water or peanuts, something with protein, and I'll just hand it out the window. Oh my God, Edie, I swear we're like uh, two peas in a pod. I, my garbage people, there's two of them. And so I go to the dollar store and I get those mixed nuts and yeah. they're only $2 for a little packet. So I take them out and the one guy hugs me, said, oh my God. I said, do you like these kind of things? I thought about you the other day. And he said, Oh my gosh, and we are starved. We've been out here since 4 30 this morning. So he and the Even woman drive. Yes. Right. People and that are out, you never know. Yes, good. What point. a blessing is that can pay it forward. And yes, I'm all about it. And I think that's if we can do this uh in life, we'll have better lives. Oh, definitely. And I thank you so much for letting me and, be a part. And you know what? What you're doing is you're actually stringing your pearls, aren't you? When yes, you're doing I, all. <laughs> this I'm is great. My oh, my gosh. Get your pearls, the kind of pearls you want to be wearing. <laughs> That's what Edie's saying. Take That's those. Right. Uh, if you got some on there you don't like, take them off. Take Edie, them off. I cannot tell you how. And I know my audience has many pearls that they've got pearls of hope from your message today. I am truly, truly, it's just set me sky high for the rest of the day. Thank you. Aww. And I love your storytelling. The most powerful impact we can have on people's lives is storytelling. And you are a master. So thank you for giving me this opportunity mm. today. So to my audience who has been listening, and I know you've got some great tips. Again, I just want to remind you that this is Hello Self Podcast, and I am your host, Patricia Leonard. And as I always say, keep dreaming and dreaming and living those dreams. Thank you for being here today. Until next time. Thank you for joining Hello Self today, and may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe, and remember this, keep dreaming.